Father God, we just love you. We've come to honor you. We've come to minister to you. We know we're going to get ministered to because you're a faithful God. But we've come to set this first part, to offer the first part of this service to you. To offer an offering of praise. An offering of worship. Oh, we love you so much, Father. Have your way in this service. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven tonight. Glory to God. Days of heaven on earth tonight. Ha! <laughs> Dinner's at 6. It's 6 o'clock tonight. Oh, we just thank you, Father, for it. We stir our faith up. Glory to God. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Do it with passion. You know, you can pray passively or you can pray passionately. Amen? If you don't have your prayer language, just begin to just begin to thank him for the things you're believing for in, in, in your natural language. Amen. Just begin to lift up by faith. Oh, we just thank you, Father. Our faith projects, our, our, our things that we're believing for, they're done because you're a faithful God. Oh, we just bless you, Lord. We honor you. We worship you. You're a good father. You're a good father. Oh, and Jesus, we honor you. You're a faithful savior. Glory to God. We just bless you, Lord. I'm going to do a little bit of praise. Is that all right?
proclaim our love for him. Oh, yes, he has, he's paid. He has paid the highest price. Oh, oh we praise you, Jesus. He has proven his great love for us. And we will praise him with our lives, every part. Proclaim our love for him every day, every day, yes. Yes, we'll proclaim our love for him unashamed. Oh, yes, we will. We'll proclaim our love for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you paid it all. You paid it all, Lord. You paid it all for me. You paid it all for me. You purchased my freedom, Lord. Freedom from lack, freedom from pain and sickness. Oh, you purchased my freedom, Lord, from fear. Oh, yes, you have, yes, you have. That's why we sing tonight. <laughs> yes, that's why we sing tonight. Because we are free. Sing it to him. You have paid. You have paid the highest price. You have proven your great love for us. And we will praise you with our lives and proclaim our love for you. You have paid. Sing it to him. You have paid the highest price. Oh, yes, you have. You have proven. You have proven your great love for us and we will praise you with our lives and we'll proclaim our love for you every day unashamed yes we'll proclaim our love for you every day unashamed Yes, we'll proclaim my love for you. Come on, just declare that every day, every day. Yes, we'll proclaim my love for you every day, every day. Just make that commitment in your heart that every day you'll proclaim your love for him. Amen. Every day you'll speak his praises. Amen. Every day. There won't be a day that goes by that you won't magnify Jesus. Amen that you won't magnify Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he's a faithful God. And as we magnify him, oh, that praise, it releases faith. We're talking about faith tonight. Are y'all ready? We're faith people. Say I'm a faith person. And then just to clear this by faith, because we're faith people, say I'm a faith giant. Say it like you mean it. Say I'm a faith giant. You may not feel like one tonight. <laughs> But we don't go by what we feel like, amen? We're not moved by what we see. We're not moved by what we feel. We're moved by what we believe, and we believe His Word, amen? Amen? Mm, just lift your hands in this place. Lift your hands in this place, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, your love is true. Your love is good. Oh, yes, it is. Listen to this before you sing it. There is no striving. There is no striving for your love. Freely you have given. Freely you have given to us. No strife. There is no strife. 
yes you have freely you have given to us sing that with me there is no striving there is no striving for your given it all freely you have given to us there's no striving sing it again there is no striving oh yes there is no striving for your have given to us there's no striving oh father hallelujah your yoke is easy your burden is light hallelujah you told us to come to you all that were heavy laden 
and that you would give us rest. Thank you, so, Father, we're grateful for Matthew chapter 11 that tells us to come to you. Yes. That's the answer in any and every situation is coming to you. You told us in your word to call unto you and you'd answer and you would show us great and mighty things. Yes. So grateful, Father, that we don't have to work to get into your presence. Yes. I'm so grateful as believers, it is our right, it is our privilege to call upon your name and you answer us. Yes. We don't have to strive, we don't have to work, we don't have to toil, Hallelujah. we don't have to earn a place in your presence. You just said to come. Amen. You said all those that are thirsty, let them come unto you and drink. You just told us to come. Amen. You just told us to come. So Father, we're here tonight as in the middle of the week, Father, just coming to you and we receive the rest that comes from your presence. We receive the strength that comes from your presence. Father, I thank you for a strength to come on the inside of every single person that's here and every single person that's watching by way of internet, a strength. Thank you, Father, for your presence that strengthens us. Your strength that empowers us, that equips us for every season, every situation. Thank you, Father. There's no striving. You called us sons and daughters. Oh, Father, we yield to that right now. We yield to that. We yield to your presence. Thank you, Father, for just a refreshing. Hmm. Hallelujah. Shake off every weight. Shake off every concern. Shake off every fear, every worry. Shake it off. And receive his word tonight. Receive the still small voice that may be speaking to you right now. That's endeavoring to encourage you. But you've been so busy. You've been so confused. You've been so wrought up by so many things. Allow the still small voice of the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. Comfort your heart. Oh, Father, I just thank you for just a refreshing in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, be our teacher tonight. Be our guide tonight. Where people need wisdom, that they would receive it. Where people need comfort, they'd receive it. Where people need healing, they'd receive it. Yes. Where they need joy, they'd receive it. Because you are the good and perfect gift yes. that came from above. You are a Holy Spirit. You are a treasure that exceeds. Yes. And we thank you, Father, for causing us to grow up in your word tonight. Growing, growing up into Christ. And we thank you for it tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Why don't you love on one another and, and, and welcome them to Heritage of Faith. Tell them how good it is to see them tonight. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Cassie. Thank you, Joseph. Hallelujah. God is good. Oh, have your Bibles turned to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. And, you know, I, I think we were 12 or 13 weeks we talked about. We just finished last week, uh, or actually the week before that. And, you know, Captain Rex kind of touched on some of those things. We finished our series on I Don't Care. And encourage you, if you missed any of those, to go back and and, uh, and continue to meditate on those things because what faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, right? And, and so allow that to continue to strengthen you. But tonight we're going to begin a new series and it's just titled Faith. You know, after all, we are heritage of faith. 
So, uh, you know, what is heritage of faith all about? It's about leaving a legacy of faith, you know, to the next generation. It's about seeing people within our community grow up into faith. And, uh, and, and, and faith is important. Uh, you know, faith is not a denomination. It's, faith is not a movement. Uh, it's not a formula. It's not a, it's not a sermon that's preached one time. But it's how we live. Yes, sir. You know, peop, you know when you, you hear the word faith, you know, your, your mind can go to so many different, different phases. And you know, people even make statements, even in our modern stuff, well, what faith are you? <laughs> you know, what, well, what faith are you? And then really the meaning denomination. But when we talk about faith here, we're talking about how we live our lives. Because really it comes down to it's how Jesus lived his life. It's how God created the universe. You know, through the worlds were framed. Hebrews chapter 11. And so we, we shouldn't gloss over a topic like faith. Because, because the universe is still expanding because of it. You know, I've, I've, you know, I listen to a lot of different things, podcasts, and even outside of, uh, of you know, people that are within, I guess you could call our camp, so to speak. And I, I've heard a lot of things recently of, well, you know, brother, well, you know, just, you know, the, the fathers in the faith, you know, they, they brought this message of faith, but I'm you, they didn't have a revelation of grace. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. And, and then I say, well, you know, we, we need to be teaching a lot more on grace. And I'm like, Really? Well, if you don't understand faith, you'll never be able to operate in grace. There you go. Because it's by grace through faith. Yes. Yes. And, and so you can't throw out one because, hey, we're in a new dispensation or we're in this new thing right now and we don't need this faith as much as we need to know this grace. You, you'll never be able to operate in the fullness of what grace is if you don't understand anything about faith. You can't, you, it's, not, it's not one is better than the other. You have to understand that everything that we receive from God is going to come through faith. Everything. Now, I like what Joey said a, a couple weeks ago when he talked about, you know, where there's this pressure to build faith. Or there's this pressure, is, is my faith strong enough? Or this pressure that we have to, no, if, if you're getting into that, then you're getting into some sort of works, works understanding and you don't understand faith to begin with. And so we're going to be on this series between now and probably the first or second week of October. So, so we're going we're gonna to lay some things out about faith. We're going to lay some things about having faith in God. And we're going to talk about this exceeding growing faith. Because, you know, uh, the Bible says that we've been given the measure of faith. Oh, Hebrews chapter 12 says everyone's been given the measure of faith. It didn't say a measure. It said the measure. Yes. And so that didn't mean one person got a, a, a different measure than you got. I mean, if it was a measure, then, you know, Jeremiah could have got, got one measure and Danny could have got a different measure and Mr. Pollard could have got a different measure. But no, it was the measure, meaning the measure is a set portion. Meaning when you got born again, you got the measure of faith. And, and what the Lord revealed to me is we, when you got born again, you got a seed down on the inside of you. When you got born again, His Spirit became living down on the inside of you. But there's also, we have to understand is at the same time, we have a responsibility. We have a response, just as a farmer has a responsibility to sow seed, it's the same thing, you know, with my physical body, yes. you know, if, you know, you have to look at faith as like a muscle, you know, if you don't understand faith or you're not operating in faith, then, then faith does grow in, in, in measures. If, if it didn't, then how come Jesus labeled it? Little faith, great faith, no faith. He, so, so there's these different things. And we're going to learn about all these different things over these next several months. And so I want to encourage you, if you miss any of them, come back, listen to, listen to them again, hear them. Because I'm telling you, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You know, Jesus had to grow in faith. 
All of a sudden, Jesus, when he came into the earth, it, it wasn't just like, bam, the Son of God, and he's this man of all-knowing faith, and this man that operates, and, you know, contrary to what some people believe, Jesus wasn't doing miracles in the sandbox with John the Baptist. It, it wasn't, it, it didn't happen. It, 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 it did not happen. No, he, he didn't start operating in miracles until he was 30 years of age. But we know even at a young age, it said that he grew, he grew in wisdom and favor yes. with God and man. Yes. So Jesus had to grow. Yes, he, he had to grow in, in wisdom. He had to grow in favor with God and man. So what makes us think that this process, after we get born again, that we're not going to have to grow? We're going to have to grow. Yeah. We're going to have to grow. That's, the Bible talks about growing in grace. Jesus had to grow in grace with favor with God and man. So let's, let's get into this. Galatians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Actually, before I need to read this other scripture before I read that one. 1 John 5, 4 in the message says, Every God-begotten person, or you could say born-again person, conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. The person that wins out over the world is the one who believes Jesus is the Son of God. This is, this is the message translation. Every God-begotten person conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. The person that wins out over the world is the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So as we begin talking about faith tonight, in these next two weeks I'm going to be doing, and it's going to be some foundational stuff here, but realizing that faith, for one, you realize is a conquering power and it's a conquering force. That's what it says, that your faith has the ability to overcome the world. So faith is powerful. Say that with me. Faith, faith. Is, powerful. is powerful. So your faith is a spiritual force that can cause you to, can propel you to succeed. Your faith is a spiritual force that causes you to succeed. Well, a lot of times we look at certain things in the Bible and because we're natural beings, human beings, and we live in the natural, we have a flesh in our body, we try to do these things naturally. But faith isn't a natural substance. It's a spiritual substance. You know, that's why people, you know, we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit are spiritual things. But too often, we try to operate in them in the natural. And we try to perfect ourselves in the natural. Well, I just need, I just need, to, well, I just need to work to have more patience. I just need to work to have more love. I just need to work to have more self-control. No, you need to tap into the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit that are down on the inside of you and learn how to yield to the Spirit of God that's on the inside of you. So faith is a spiritual force that can propel you to succeed. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance. Faith is a substance. Now as I begin, and, and we lay a, a, just pretty much, I believe the foundation of what we're going to be dealing with is is that faith is a substance. But as we talk about our life and we talk about growing in faith, our faith has to be built upon something. It's not, it's not building upon wishful thinking. It's not building on a few scriptures we've memorized. You know, there was times where I memorized scriptures but, and I was quoting scriptures, but I wasn't in faith. And we can look at it this way. Say, say you know, you have scriptures and say they're, they're the walls to a house. You know, say, say one of the scriptures would be, God shall supply all of our needs. Yeah. Or another wall is, is uh, by his stripes I am healed. Mm -hmm. You know, another scripture is, is um, let's say, for instance, he heals all of our diseases. Or he provides, he, he is, a, he is a, a good shepherd and he provides for us. So we can have all these different scriptures lined up, but what are those scriptures built upon? Uh, come on. Because if, if they're not built on anything, they're just words. Right. 
If, 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 you know, because I can have a whole lot of word. Because we know we say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, so, it, so it has to go beyond just hearing words. But what are the words, what are the words building on the inside of you? And I'm trying to lay, lay this out in just a practical way for you to understand and for us to understand as we go on this journey because I'm growing just like you are, right? And so it's beyond just words on a page. It has to come to understanding the word is beyond just words. The word is a person. And so understanding the word is communicating more than just word. It's commuting, communicating character. And so it's not just all of a sudden rememorizing scriptures, but what are those scriptures built upon? If you don't have a revelation, if you don't have a foundation, then the, your wall, so, so to speak, are going to fall when you come to times, when you come in circumstances of struggle or, you, or, or the storms of life. You know, come, you know, come against you. You know, it, it talks about in Matthew chapter 7, there was a man that heard the word and did the word, and there was a man that just heard the word, and it said one built his house upon a rock, and the other built his house upon the sand, right? And it said both of them had storms of life that came against them, and the one that built his house upon a rock, it said it didn't fall. Why? Because he was the one that heard the word and did the word. Right. And the other one, it was the same storm, and it says great was the fall thereof. So, but what is our foundation built upon? Yes. What is that foundation built upon? Let's look at Galatians chapter 5. Verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. Let me read it again. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith works by love. He, it's interesting that he talks about in Jesus, it doesn't matter whether you're Jew or Gentile. That's really what he's talking about. He's, he's talking about circumcision versus non-circumcision. Circumcision was a mark of the covenant for Jewish people. So if you weren't circumcised, then, then you didn't have a covenant with God. So when it talks about being in Jesus, it's saying, you know what? You're not better because you're circumcised or you're not circumcised. But what comes down to is faith. It's a faith which works by love. Faith that worketh by love. Now, this word worketh, is where we get our word energy from. If you look it up in the Greek, it, it's, if the root of it is energizo. And so when he says this faith works by love, the, word that, the root form for the word uh, uh, for worketh is active. Some of the other words mean to affect, it means to put forth power, or it means to be operative. So faith is effective by love or faith is active with love so we need to understand what is our foundation going to be built upon our foundation has to be built upon our foundation of faith has to be built upon the love of God because I can have all sorts of good sounding scriptures I can have understanding of all these different promises but if it's not built upon this foundation of love they're just words. Yeah. I have to be, my life has to be built upon the love of God. Yeah. It has to be built upon the love of God. Let me say this with me. Love will bring me through. You see, the scriptures that you're standing on, what gives those scriptures life is when you understand the character behind the person that wrote the scriptures. It's not just standing on promises, but it's, but it's understanding and having a relationship with the promiser. Yes. So, so too often people are going after faith as in scriptures, but not going after God. Because let me tell you something, if you go after God, you'll get faith. You know, uh, there's a lot of misconceptions of faith. I, 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 had, I was even guilty of this where I had, I had faith in my faith. But, you know, you, 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 it's not about having faith in your faith. Well, well, I've just been a Christian for 20 years, so I'm a great man of, of faith. 
What do you mean when you say you're a great man of faith? I'm a great man of faith. (laughs) I'm a great man of faith because of who I believe in. My my faith and my life of faith has to be established not in my ability to believe, but in my ability to trust God. I know these are kind of a play on words, but people have misconceptions about, we talk about exceeding growing faith, and it's not about how big you can grow your faith, but it's how how much can you trust God. Go to Jeremiah chapter 31. Love will bring bring me through. Say, God loves me. Your faith has to be established upon an unshakable revelation of his love. Jeremiah 31. Verse 1. At the same time, says the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people which were left off the sword found grace in the wilderness even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Now, why did I bring this scripture up? Because I want you to see the character of God. Because our faith is going to have to be established on his character. It's going to have to be established upon his love. And so here at the beginning, it says, says, will I be the God of all the families of the earth? Are you, are you part of his family? Yes. Then it's going to be you, have to be, you have to establish your life knowing how much he loves you. It said, yeah, they found grace in the wilderness, and I went to cause them to arrest, but the Lord appeared to old unto me, but with love and kindness have I caught, drawn thee. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 54. So I'm just take do these two Old Testament scriptures here. There's so many we could go to, but Isaiah 54, verse 10. It says, For though the mountain should de- depart and the hills be shaken and removed, yet my love and kindness shall not depart from you. Now listen to that. For though the mountains should de- depart and the hills be shaken and removed, Yet my love and kindness shall not depart from you. Meditate on that for a moment. My love and kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace and completeness be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. What's compassion? Compassion is a love that responds. Not just a love, but a love that acts. Man, his love and kindness. Have this revelation, this understanding of how much he loves you. Let's go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Say, love will bring me through. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How many people have heard that scripture before? (laughs) For God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now think, for God so loved the world. You, you see, if he never loved, he would have never gave. And if he never gave, then I could never believe. And if I never believed, I'd never be able to receive life. So everything hinges upon the understanding of how much God loves you and me. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him, whoever would have faith in him, would not perish but have 
everlasting life. God so loved the world, he gave so I wouldn't perish. See, that's our, it, it, our faith has to be established on this principle. Because if he never gave, I could never believe. What's another way I could say it? It's a gift. So if he never gave, I could never receive. So faith is also found in my ability to receive what he's promised. Receive what he said. Receive what I have a right to. Receive what the covenant is all about. For God so loved the world. He gave his son so my dreams wouldn't perish. For God so loved the world, he, he, he gave so I could have life and I could have life in abundance. It's not just, it's just saying, well, just have faith, brother. No, it's saying, gain an understanding of how much he loves you. I had a Bible instructor that, that, uh, that taught us about this, and, he, and it was a she, actually. And she said, she said she kept crying out to God of wanting more faith. And, 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 he, and she, the Holy, she got quiet enough, and the Holy Spirit finally said, you don't need more faith. You just need a greater revelation of how much I love you. Amen. You just need to know how much, more, how much I love you. Because if you knew how much he loved you and you knew his character and you knew, you knew his character and you knew his word, then the thing is, 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 is that's what our faith has to be established upon about how much he loves us. Amen. For God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son. You know, when we miss the mark, so to speak, or we fall short uh, of something or we do something that we know it's opposed to really what we know God's telling us to do, what happens down on the inside of our hearts? We, we all of a sudden feel maybe like we missed it, right? Like we, we let God down or, or we, we did something. But did, did your mistake change how much God loves you? Did, did it change that fact, Right? It's just really the Holy Spirit. It's, you know, I, I like call it like the, the, the scratch of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, maybe you shouldn't do this. It's kind of a little, uh, you know. But it doesn't change how much he loves you. And he's always there to lead you. Okay, keep, come, keep, keep on this journey. Keep on this path. But what happens is when it comes to walking by faith, is too often because we don't understand his love, when things happen, we second guess his love. And when we second guess his love, we, we're trying to figure it out in our heads and we're reasoning. Yeah. Let's go to Mark chapter, Mark chapter 2 for a moment. I, I just want to bring this out. I, I didn't have this in my notes, but I just want to go here just for a moment. And this is a story of when Jesus was preaching and there was a lot of, the, the house was filled with people and, uh, and, and he was preaching, this is Mark 2, and, and he was preaching, the room was filled and it said the presence of the Lord was there to heal. Remember this story? And, and, but yet no one was getting healed. The, the, the presence was there, but yet nothing was happening. The anointing of God was there, but nothing was happening. The power of God was there, but no lives were being changed. So that let, lets me know, in order for me to, to tap into the power of God or tap into the life of God, it's going to require something. It's not just going to be just to sit back and say, well, grace will take care of it. No, there's got to be something that connects you to the grace that's already present. Amen. See, the grace was present there to heal every person that was there. That's right. The anointing of God there was to fix every problem that was there, but no problems were being fixed and no bodies were being healed. Until four crazy men and a sick man ripped off the roof and started lowering him down because they couldn't find a way to get in. They were expectant. They were believing. And then it says this in verse, uh, verse 5, it says, And when Jesus saw their faith, 
he said unto them, sick of the palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. So Jesus could see faith. You, you can see faith. So it took faith to tap into the grace. Jesus is grace. It took faith to tap into the grace that was present. It wasn't just going to happen by osmosis. But yet, he got healed, but yet Jesus says, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, this is verse 6 of what I want you to see. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. See, when you don't understand God's love, you'll reason in your heart of how come he got healed, but yet other people didn't get healed. And faith... Your faith will always end at the point of reasoning. There you go. So the Pharisees were sitting there and they were reasoning in their hearts. Why? Because they were questioning, how can God forgive this man? Because they didn't know how much he loved. He, loved. he didn't know how much he loved them. And that's why no one was getting healed in the room. Because no one was releasing their expectancy and that Jesus was there to meet their needs. Amen. So in order for us to, to be great men and women of faith, our lives have to be established upon not how much scripture we can quote, That's right. not how, how much we've earned anything, but how much does he love us? Yes. Go to 1 John chapter 4. I mean, to teach on the love of God would, would take months, 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 and months. So I'm just dealing with foundational stuff here. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved... Let us love one another, for love is of God. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was, manif in this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only Son into the world, that we might live through Him. So how can we see the love of God? We can see it by the way that He sent Jesus. I could, there's a lot here in these scriptures. Go over to verse 17. Uh, next to verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. Say that to me, God is, God is love. You've heard me say this before, God doesn't have love, He is love. That's right. if, if I were to take a glass bottle and I would have shattered it into a million pieces, it doesn't, doesn't matter, it's still glass. You know, it's the same thing if we talk about, you know, God being a refuge, we talk about Him being a strong tower, we talk Him about being provider, we talk Him about being righteousness, whatever it is, it still comes back to the fact that He still loves. So God is love. It's not something that He has, it's what He is. It's what He is. Go, go to Isaiah 41. Say, say that with me, God is love. Throwing a lot of scriptures at you tonight. Okay. Verse 10 in Isaiah 41, it says, Fear not, there is nothing to fear, for I am with you. So, but God is love, and love is God. So, anywhere where it talks about God, let's put the word love there. Fear not, there is nothing to fear, for love is with you. See, what can be the opposite of faith? Fear. See, you fear because you don't know he's with you. Right. So you can have faith when you realize love is with you. Right. Fear not, there's nothing to fear, for love is with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for 
for, I, for love, for I am your God, for I am love. Love will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, love will help you. Yes, love will hold you up and retain you in love with, with love's victorious right hand of rightness and justice. So God is love. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Say, love will bring me through. Mm-hmm. First Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 4, and Amplified says, Love endures long. So we could say God endures long. God is patient and kind. God never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. God is not boastful or vainglorious, and God does not display it, it, himself haughtily. God is not conceited, arrogant, or inflated with pride. God is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love, does not insist on its own rights or in its own way, for God is not self-seeking. God is not touchy or fretful or resentful. God does not take account for evil done to it. God does not pay attention to a suffered wrong. God does not rejoice at injustice or unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. God bears up under anything and everything that comes. God is ever ready to believe the best of every person. God's hopes are fadeless under all circumstances and and God endures everything without weakening. God never fails. Love never fails. So when you, you connect these together, then what happens is you're building a foundation of what Scripture rests upon. When you understand how much He loves you, it builds, it builds the Scriptures that, you're, that are building your faith. God is love. Go to Luke chapter 22. God is love. Now in the book of Colossians... It talks about that Jesus is the visible representation of the invisible. Jesus even told the disciples, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So if you want to get a picture of what God's like, or you want to get a picture of what love's like, let's look at Jesus. So let's look look at Luke 22. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. So Peter, Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. The word sift here means to, as like a sif, like a, a, a sif, I'm trying to, you ever, if you ever uh, baked anything, everyone ever baked anything and you have that sifter, what is it? It, it makes that, that flour more fine, right? And so, and, and, and so what he's, and it's also the, a picture, it's actually the, the picture in the Greek, and it's interesting, the figure that it gives you in the Greek is someone that is torn up inside because they can't solve a riddle. That's the picture in the Greek that this gives you. It's kind of like an enigma. It's, the, it, it, it conf, it's confuse, confusing. And because you're confused, you're, 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 you ever heard the term scatterbrained? You know, it's like your, your mind's all over the place and you're, you're, you know, you're, 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 you're pacing the floor. All these things are happening. Why? Because it's, it's so Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. And what is he trying? He's trying to sift you. He's presented an enigma to you, a riddle to you, because, to, because why? That's the next verse tells us. It says, but I prayed for you that your faith fail not. So Satan's desired to have you. Why? Because he wants your faith to fail. And so the enemy will come with enigmas, puzzles. He'll try to sift you through circumstance, sift you through offense, sift you through different difficult things. It's not God sifting you. It says Satan desired to have you, that he might sift you as wheat. It's not God trying to, to present in a puzzle to you to see what you're made of. No, the enemy's trying to destroy your life. And so here, but, but Jesus, what Jesus, love, 
Look at, look at Jesus, we can see God, right? He's the visible of the invisible. But it says, but Jesus says, I have prayed for you. How many people like but Jesus praying for you? How many people would like that idea? He says, I am praying for you. Why am I praying for you? Because I don't want your faith to fail. Because Satan wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your cause. See, because God saw something in Peter. See, God knows things about our life that we don't know. And God saw on the day of Pentecost that when Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost, he would stand up and 3,000 people would get saved. But Jesus said, I prayed for you. Love prayed for you. Why? Because Peter... Your faith can't fail. Why? Because there's 3,000 people on the day of Pentecost that are waiting for you. But yet if your faith has failed, if you quit, if you give up, if you throw in the towel, yes. what are those 3,000 people? Love prayed for him. Love prayed for him that his faith wouldn't fail. Man, love wants you to succeed. Amen. Love wants you to succeed in every area of your life. Yes. Love wants you to succeed in every area of your life. Love will bring you through. Go to Romans chapter 8. And I'm, I'm closing with maybe two, maybe two more scriptures. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. What shall we say to all this? If love be for us, who can be against us? Because love did not spare his own son, but love delivered the son up for us all. How shall love not with him also freely give us all things? Much would love freely give us all things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of love's elect? Your, your love's elect. It is love that justifies. Verse 8. Who is he that condemneth? It's Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of love, who also makes intercession for us. Jesus is still praying. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Peter, Satan desired to have you. I might sift you like wheat, like wheat but I have prayed for you. Yes. Here, according to this, it says he is also making, making intercession for us. Maybe, is he praying the same thing for us, that our faith wouldn't fail? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? I mean, these things can't separate us. Yeah, Paul said, you know, yes, I'm pressed on every side, but you know what? I'm not, I'm not in despair. Why? Because his life was built upon this revelation of love. Paul was the writer of Romans chapter 8. What shall separate? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? As is written, for thy sake, we're killed all the day long. We're accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay... Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Yes. I mean, I'm conquering. I'm a conqueror over this peril. I'm a conqueror over the sword. I'm a conqueror over the nakedness. I'm a conqueror over, a conqueror over the famine. I win. I'm a conqueror over the persecution. Why? Because he loves me. Yes. I'm more than a conqueror. Why? Because he lo your faith will not fail when you establish your life upon the love of God. Yes. Your faith is not established in your mind, your thinking, but is established upon your understanding on the, down on the inside of you of how much He loves you. 
And it's not, it, and it's a knowing. It's, it's coming to a place where you, you step out of, I think he loves me, to I know that he loves me. Amen. Faith doesn't operating in thinking, wishing, and, and, and could be, maybe be, maybe, no, it's I know. Paul said, I know in whom I have believed. It's, it's a knowing. It's not, I think he, no, I know it. Verse 38, for I am persuaded. That's faith. You want to see faith in this scripture? That's faith. I am persuaded. I'm persuaded that neither death nor angels, death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God who is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm persuaded. Why? Because nothing can separate me from the love of God. Abraham said what I'm fully persuaded. That's faith. I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully confident. Why? Because I know he loves me. Go to Mark chapter 11 and we'll close with this. Faith works by love. My faith is active. My faith is operative. My faith is effective when I know how much he loves me. Mark chapter 11, the scripture that Kenneth Hagin wrote. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Peter remembered in verse 21, and Peter remembered and said to him, Master, look, the fig tree which you doomed has withered away and Jesus replying said to them, have faith in God. And that's where I'm going to stop tonight. I'll pick up where, we, where I left off. I'll pick up where I left off next week. But have faith in God. Have faith in love. Yes. Have faith in love. Allow a revelation of his love to go off on the inside of you. Because it's the whole point of faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word is what? To get to know him. Amen. It's not to get to know scripture. It's not to get to know words. It's to get to know a person. Amen. The person. It's having faith. Not in my faith. Yes. It's having faith in God and having faith in God is having faith confidence being persuaded about his love Father we thank you for your word tonight and we thank you for the strength that it brings us I thank you that we are heritage of faith and I thank you through these weeks and months ahead Father that we're going to grow closer to you because I do believe that faith our faith is a conquering force. But our faith must be established in who you are. And I believe through it, we're going to be stronger. We're going to come to a place where the centurion that Jesus said, I haven't seen faith like this, no, not in Israel. That we'll be able to come to a place where we operate in great faith. We thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness. Thank you for your hand over every single person in this place, Lord, that they wouldn't be in condemnation in any capacity or any way, Father, but more than anything, they'd fall in love with you throughout this series. Thank you for your peace, your strength. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You receive something tonight? Yes. Amen. God is good. Just seeing if there's anything else the Holy Spirit's saying. Mm. Hallelujah. I think I'm done. Hallelujah. God is good. God is faithful. Mm. Oh, you ready to give? Amen.
if they'll have the three ways that you can give and, and be, part, be part of the offering tonight. If you give them by way of the internet, you can follow those same give prompts as well. Amen. As it pertains to, even as it pertains to our giving. Remember, tithing is not a debt we owe, it's a, it's a seed we sow. We give because we love God. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You know, just having just an overwhelming desire or an overwhelming understanding that God's going to take care of you. Yes. Be convinced of it. Be convinced of it. Most people I know that don't, don't give or don't tithe and those things, it's, it, it, they kind of hit a wall where it's like, do I really trust? Do I really trust God? And first, it's not about, it, it's, it comes back to getting to that place. Trust is built on relationship. Amen. And it's built over time. And so I encourage you, if you, you, you're not tithing or giving, start somewhere. Yeah. Release your trust in a, in a small way. Amen. In a small way. And then allow God to, to, to reveal himself through his word and get to a place where, where, where faith, like I said, is, is, is not striving. It's, it's, it's uh, what really, true, I believe true faith comes down to is, is when things become first nature. It's not, I'm not striving. It's just, I, it's just, it's, it, it's, faith is just, it's a response of, of what you know. It's not, a, it's not, well, okay, the three steps to faith are this. Okay, X minus Y plus C equals this, and, and that's faith. No, no. It's just, all of a sudden, it's just, it's who you are and what's on the inside of you. And that's what I want us to get to as a, as, as a body where, where it just becomes first nature. It's just, we just, we just react, we just respond. First nature because we know truth and we know it love, amen? Well, Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to give tonight and we just thank you for your continued faithfulness to watch over us, uh, your word to perform. And we thank you, Father, that you give seed to the sower and you multiply our seed sown. And we just thank you that you also multiply our resources so we can be a blessing everywhere we go, Father. And we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, coming up, uh, we have uh, ushers. You can receive the offering. Um, this coming Sunday, we'll continue on uh, our series on righteousness. It's who I am. And uh, man, I was excited about this past Sunday and looking forward to, to go deeper in this and, and seeing us gain that understanding of who we are in Christ that we are righteous. We are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's not becoming one day, maybe soon when we get to heaven. No, through Jesus, I was made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Also, I believe it's this coming, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Sam, but I believe the kids that are going to Dry Gulch, um, the camp, they'll be leaving on Monday morning, right? And they have to be up here at seven, right? All right, so, so make sure you're on time for that. And so um, for all the parents that are bringing their kids, it's because if you're not here by the time we're leaving, you will be left and you will have to drive them to Tulsa. And um, because we have deadlines and times that we have to hit to get there in a certain time, so make sure you're prompt because there's a lot of things that we have to do before we leave with the kids and everything. And also uh, be here as well that morning and praying over the team before they leave. Uh, also, there's no girlfriend's Bible study in July because it's going to be uh, right there around 4th of July. But we will have next level men's meeting, which I believe will be July 6th. Um, also, don't forget, mark your calendars for the Believers Convention uh, coming up the first week in August as well. Uh, and so other than that, everyone stand to your feet. Don't forget, if you want to um, if you want to get uh, the Heritage of Faith worship album with Cassie, uh, you can go to iTunes and you can just you can type in "I call you Father" and you can download that. I encourage you to, to download that and, and get that in and you're for your own worship time. And I believe it will bless you. So other than that, love you guys. Have a great week. I'm sure your cars will be ready, or if not, almost ready. Uh, uh, that love you all. Have a great week. Mm-hmm.